Hello and welcome to chapter eight, reporting and analyzing receivables. We have three learning objectives today and we are gonna start off with uh, identifying the types of receivables and record accounting, uh, pardon me, and record accounts receivable transactions. Uh, those two little pups there uh, snuggling up in the Costco doggy bed, <laughs> that's probably just big enough for one of them. Uh, those are my pups and when I was going through and making some edits and updates to the slides today, uh, I, I just wanted to take a quick picture and share it with you. Um, Bambi is the uh, naked one. She is a Chinese crested and Guinness is a little fawn, um, French bulldog, and they love each other very much. They're, they're quite cute. All right. I, at least in my humble and biased opinion. Okay. So talking about types of accounts receivables or pardon me, types of receivables we have um, in general, so if you look at our balance sheet, we have assets equal liabilities plus equity. And within the assets, um, fall the receivables. Uh, friendly reminder, definition of an asset. That is uh, the result of a past transaction that the uh, company owns that will result in a future inflow of um, resources. Um, so usually typically cash. Receivables are amounts owed to a company by its customers, employees, government, uh, and anybody else. Uh, these are claims that are expected to be collected in cash. So we can see how under the big umbrella of assets, um, receivables would meet that broader definition, but yet be specific enough to be referred to as receivables. All right, so we have three main types of <laughs> receivables. And if you look at the third one, you realize it's kind of like the other bucket, <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll just go with it. So our first type is accounts receivable. And these are amounts owed by customers. These typically are a result of a sale. Uh, so your customer comes in and instead of giving you cash, uh, they're like, I'll catch you soon. Uh, so typically what would happen is you have an ongoing relationship with them and uh, you, you know, they get goods and services more frequently than they would pay, you know, at the end of every month or a defined set of period, uh, your company would invoice them and then they would pay the invoice according to the invoice terms, typically 30 to 90 days. And perhaps as you saw in a prior chapter, if they pay within a certain number of days, perhaps 10, they may receive a discount. Okay. Then we have notes receivable, and these tend to be for longer periods of time than an accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is literally just like a bit of a timing issue. Hey, uh, they're like your friend that never has cash on them yet always like wants food or, or beverages, uh, you know, and they're like, hey, hey, I'll catch you later. I'll catch you later. And like, you know, eventually they, they do settle up uh, and it's typically within like 30 to 90 days. Uh, a note receivable, however, typically goes beyond those 90 days. Uh, they are more of a formal credit instrument, meaning there tends to be a formal contract uh, with terms typically for interest. And these notes receivable are typically for one year or less, um, but they may be long-term notes receivable if they extend beyond one year. Uh, both of these accounts receivable, AR, and notes receivable, NR, are both referred to as trade receivables. So you can kind of look on here and think about these two as trade receivables. Cool. And then you got other receivables, which as the name suggests are, are everything else that meets that definition of a receivable that are not accounts receivable or notes receivable. Some examples are interest receivable, uh, loans to company officers. Uh, I worked, I consulted at a large, large uh, company. They had a billion, over a billion dollars in assets and that was like 10, 15 years ago. And um, they moved their executives around a lot from the various uh, sub uh, subsidiaries uh, to, to one another, like all across Canada, sometimes North America. Every once in a while they ship somebody to uh, South America or Australia. And so uh, when they're moving them around, these people uh, often have families and uh, they often want to buy homes for their families. Sometimes they have to sell their homes first 
Um, you know, maybe it costs a lot of money. Anyways, um, <laughs> and so to entice them uh, to stay with the company and make these moves and be happy, uh, they would often give loans to these individuals to purchase homes, uh, etc. And there would be a very favorable rates. Now, if they're at two favorable rates, then that is going to have a tax consequence. But like, listen, I would rather pay 45 cents uh, <laughs> of, instead of a dollar, right? So that's um, a type of other receivable a company could lend um, an executive money for a move or for a down payment on a house. And then, uh, you know, over very favorable terms, five or 10 years, uh, the executive or likely the next bonus, uh, the executive would pay it back. And what's like, uh, oh gosh, it's just such a smart move for a company because they basically are like, hey, cool. Uh, not only do we supply your paychecks, but we are also your debt we are also your bank. So it really has like a pretty influential um, impact on an employee. So if by the way, I'm talking about this, you see that I don't really love it. I mean, listen, there's a reason why I was a consultant for so long. And that's because is if you work for a company you have and you're an employee, you have one stream of income. If you're a consultant, you know, you can have multiple streams of income. Which one is more risky? Throw into that, you have one stream of income and now they are also your bank. Like that's, I don't know, it's getting a little close. Anyways, uh, probably some good problems to have. Uh, going, continuing on, um, there also might be sales tax receivable. Uh, perhaps you were doing your HST or GST true up. You overpaid your installments, uh, meaning um, you the guesses that you send the government every uh, three months. And at the end of the year, you're like, cool, you owe me some money. Same thing with the income tax uh, can happen. Every quarter, you give them a little bit of money. Last quarter is really bad for your company. So at year end, you true up and you end up getting uh, the receivable from your company. It happens. All right, let's give it a shot. So um, these are three different scenarios. Please tell me if you assess these scenarios as account, note, or other. Feel free to pause the video now and read ahead and you know write your guesses down or just continue along with me and we'll ease into the work of the day. Scenario number one, the vice president of manufacturing is sending you, <laughs> sending, pardon, is sending his youngest child to a prestigious university and is getting a loan from his company of $25,000. All right, yeah, if you said other, you would be correct. It's not an accounts receivable. It's not a note receivable, but rather it's one of those other types of, you know, I don't want to say weird, but just other type of receivable. You, you loan money to an employee, they're going to pay you back. And hey, if they don't pay you back, you know how to garner their paycheck or, you know, uh, reappropriate uh, their bonus check. Cool. Customer buys merchandise on account. Remember, customer buy merchandise on account, you're likely having an ongoing relationship with them. It's like your friend that borrowed, that like, I'll pay you back for that coffee. Uh, and then like once a week or once a month or once a, a term, uh, they do, or their parents do. Ah, accounts receivable, absolutely. Number two is accounts receivable. Okay, last one, and I mean, like, please don't play process of elimination because that game doesn't always work. Um, let's look at the scenario. SpongeBob's accounts receivable for SquarePants purchase has been outstanding for some time, and SpongeBob is asked to sign a note for the amount of the balance. Hmm. Well, it turns out that SpongeBob has been <laughs> delinquent in paying his receivables. So the company has said, cool, SpongeBob, if you want to keep this relationship ongoing, you either want more square pants or you want us to just not, um, you know, put a bad review on Yelp or whatever, then um, you're going to have to sign this note receivable. We're likely going to charge you some interest and we're maybe asking for some collateral, uh, you know, if you don't settle up. All right, moving along. Recording a receivable. So a receivable is recorded at the point of sale um, or when the service is provided. So let's take a little, uh, a little example here. Cool. All right. Uh, SpongeBob walks in, walks out with his square pants. We are going to, we are going to get our keyboard working and debit accounts receivable. Thank you so much, SquarePants. 
uh, and we are going to recognize that sale. We are going to recognize it for $10,000 because square pants are not cheap. And uh, so we have our account, we have our amount, and we're just going to say to recognize the sale to Square uh, or SpongeBob SB. Cool. And those of you who remember from a previous chapter, woo! You will um, realize that Cool Sam, um, that's all fine and dandy, but you also got to recognize the cost of goods sold. Uh, these square pants are not cheap to manufacture. Uh, they ended up being um, $7,500 worth of our inventory. So we're going to decrease our inventory, increase our cost of goods sold, and this is to recognize the inventory for the sale to SpongeBob. All right. So imagine this. And um, we will continue along and just think about what would happen to the debit and the credit here. The increase of the asset, um, it's not cash, not yet, um, but it will be, it better be soon. Okay, so going back to our slides here, we record it when the service is provided or the point of sale. We don't record it when the cash is given because we need to reflect the economic reality. We wouldn't make the sale to Bob um, if we didn't think that he or um, they would pay us back. So goods are out the door, we, we better recognize. Uh, then we do it at the transaction price. So we record it if we give um, SpongeBob a sale, a discount, we're like, hey Bob, like thank you so much for buying $10,000 worth. You know what we're gonna do for you because you're such a swell square pant person? We are going to give you a 2% discount. So if we're gonna give you a 2% discount, then that's what we are expecting to receive in cash, 9,800, and um, that's the sales that we recognize. All right, doesn't affect the amount of inventory going out the door. Cool, cool, all right, back. Um, and then, um, same thing, we're gonna talk about allowances in just a second, uh, but say, uh, allowances come into play because those are gonna be our guesses for, you know, if we make $100,000 worth of sales, historically, how many people don't pay us back? Um, so after we kind of record it, we're also gonna make a best guess for um, defaults. Okay, and then when the customer pays us, when SpongeBob comes back and is like, cool, you all did awesome, here is your cash, thank you so much. Uh, we are going to record the cash that we collected from uh, Bob and reduce that accounts receivable. Boom. You're like, mm, there's no slash, you're not wrong. Okay, and this is to record the cash received for outstanding AR. Cool, alrighty. Account, amount, explanation. So I have a question for you once my mouse moves over. What kind of receivables would a hospital report on its statement of financial position? So on its balance sheet, uh, if we were to dig into its accounts, uh, for me, if we were to dig into its receivables, what type of receivables do you think you would find? All right, yeah, uh, we might find uh, Amounts due from the provincial government. You know, the hospital um, you know, does amounts and they send it to the government, uh, likely the government's insurers um, for different patient services. Perhaps um, they're doing some studies that are being funded by a grant. Um, perhaps they are waiting for that grant money to come in or settle up. Um, there might be also amount due from private healthcare uh, insurance companies. So like, um, uh, I believe there is like Manu Life or uh, or Sun Life, so they are expecting to receive some funds uh, coming in for those reasons. All right. So let's do some practice, and this is the last slide of this learning objective. So stay strong. Um, record the following transactions in the books of Essex Corp. All right, so have a read, um, give this a pause, and when you come back, let's do this one together. Talk to you soon. All right, so let us take a look at the first one. Let's go July 1st. <laughs> um, I'll actually make this a bit bigger, I'm sorry. Um, okay, I may need to...
All right. So on July 1st, we sold some inventory. I say we because we are the accountants um, for Essex. Okay, cool. So July 1st, we sold some merchandise um, on account uh, to Cambridge for $58,000. I am going to debit uh, accounts receivable. Maybe I'll just specify the name, Cambridge. And I sold it for um, no discount um, due in 30 days. Cool. Um, $58,000. And um, it was a credit, and that's going to be sales. And that will be again for the $58,000. And this is to reflect sales to Cambridge. Awesome. Uh, am I done? No, <laughs> I'm not done um, because I also need to reflect the fact that I moved inventory. That's the one I had to sell. So I am going to debit our cost of goods sold um, and I am going to credit my inventory. Okay, you kind of notice that I don't attach a sub account to anything else because sales is a general bucket, cost of goods sold is a general bucket, inventory is a general bucket. Um, if we had a bunch of different types of uh, merchandise, if it wasn't just called merchandise, it was like square pants, then maybe I'd do a dash square pants, maybe uh, just depending on kind of what my uh, general, uh, my chart of accounts looks like. In chart of accounts, uh, going back to the first chapter, that is um, your entire kind of big assets, um, drilled down to all the different types of assets that kind of roll up to, you know, assets, um, accounts receivable, cash, etc. So it just helps you kind of identify the account that it will eventually roll up to and be presented in uh, your statement of financial uh, position or your um, your income, um, your balance sheet. All right. Um, so merchandise, COGS, pardon me, 32,000, boom, boom, boom. Okay, awesome. We might go sideways. We used to go up and down, and now it looks like we're gonna go sideways. So let's just, no marks for pretty, remember people? Uh, get in, make our debits and credits, and move on. Okay, awesome, ooh, yeah. To reflect the inventory sold to Cambridge, awesome. Now what happened? On, July 8th, ah, Cambridge returned some of the inventory. Okay, um, it's original cost of 13 20, restore to inventory. All right, I mean, not ideal, it means we uh, lost out on a sale, but people, this happens. All right, so we reverse what happened here. Um, we debit the sales, we credit the accounts receivable because they we don't get to record the sale anymore the sale didn't this part of the sale did not happen um so that was for twenty four hundred dollars and twenty four hundred dollars and this is to reflect um return partial return And yes, if you're screaming at the screen, I really should identify that this is Cambridge. Okay, cool. And because I just want to identify the little IOU. Thank you, Cambridge. Okay, um, you're right, that's not it. I have one more um, item here, and this is um, to debit inventory, going to restore it, increase our inventory, and that is for 1320. And that same amount is going to decrease our cost of goods sold because they returned it. Um, it's no longer a cost of goods sold. It's now a return. All right. And this is to reflect partial uh, inventory restored. All right. So scrolling on, on down on July 9th, Cambridge paid for the merchandise. All right. Cool, cool. Um, we are going to say thank you so much. Um, what date is it? July 29th. And we are going to say, boom, we got our cash. Uh, you know, that's not a bad thing. Uh, we're pretty happy about that. And we are going to credit the accounts receivable for Cambridge. All right, people, the million dollar, two dollar question is for how much? Is it the $58,000? No. It is for the $58,000, 
less that partial return. So it is going to be for $55,600. All right, um, because that's how much they owe us. You know, they bought 50,000, um, then they returned uh, 2,400, so they owe us the difference. Cool. All right, um, to reflect um, outstanding balance, Paid by Cambridge in full. Awesome. How'd you do? Uh, if you had any troubles with this, please uh, let us know. Uh, let myself and my team know. Uh, we have somebody monitoring the discussion board. I also monitor. We definitely want to help. Uh, so please know that you're not alone. Uh, we do have a mini test every two chapters. So it really is important to stay on top of these things because um, as you've seen, sometimes this material does build uh, or at least it helps fill in the conceptual model as you go through. So please do ask uh, lots of questions. We are here for that. All right. Thank you so much for your participation. I will see you in the next video.